The T in toughness is now standing for thick as vehicles in 10th edition are getting a lot more durable. My name's Alex and you're watching Major League Nerd. Gamer dads and hot moms, grab your minivan and stuff them full of your favorite troops because we are talking about the new and improved 10th edition Rhino. A big thing in GW's design philosophy for 10th edition is making things more tough, basically differentiating anti-vehicle weapons from anti-infantry weapons and vice versa. We're going to see some tougher vehicles and we see just that looking at the brand new Rhino. Moving 12, the biggest thing, T9, a normal 3 up save, 10 wounds, 6 up leadership and 2 OC. Not only are these Rhinos going up 2 points in toughness, but they're but we get a look at the Hunter Killer Missile going to BS2. 14 strength, minus 3 AP, and D6 damage. This is a one-shot weapon. As always, you fire this once, but being BS2 means that it's significantly more likely to hit. Being a one-shot weapon, they wanted to make it worth its point. The Rhino's are actually getting a melee weapon since just generic attacks are gone. You actually have to have a melee weapon now which they're printing on the cards. We see armor tracks with three attacks actually hitting on four strength, six, zero AP, one damage. So not only is this Rhino getting a buffed up Hunter Killer, it's actually getting an absolutely terrifying melee profile. Terminators beware. And we see two more core abilities that we haven't seen yet. First, take a look at Deadly Demise D3. Deadly Demise, they've confirmed, is essentially explosion or death throws or whatever the flavorful uh, name is. On a six, after it dies, you roll D6. On that six, the following number, D3, is how many is how much damage you're doing around it. So explosions not gone, death throws aren't gone, it's just been boiled down into deadly demise. Now a semi new one as well is firing deck to allowing two units to actually fire from the Rhino, no longer having the open top rule, but firing deck. The Warhammer article says two units, we'll see if they mean two models like previous editions. Uh, if two units can fire out of the Rhino, that's incredibly powerful because you can shove this thing full of desolators, have them fire outside of the Rhino kill whatever it is and they're just chilling the rhino safely they stick their guns out the windows they count down three two one pull the trigger as long as they can cool we're safe in the rhino it never have to leave or go outdoors the last ability that we haven't seen yet is self-repair just getting to heal a lost wound at the end of the command phase the humble rhino getting a glow up for sure going up toughness getting a little bit better weapons and the potential to fire units from within the vehicle gw has stated that they want to continue making vehicles vastly different to infantry in terms of defensive capabilities so as so many weapons have become strength 8 minus 4 ap it leaves vehicles getting wasted along with any infantry but not only are we revealed the rhino but we get to see the storm speeder gladiator valiant and the repulsor with Storm Speeder losing two inches of movement, gaining three toughness actually, keeping that three up save, actually gaining OC3 means that it can outhold just a single infantry. The Gladiator going up to T10 and saying that 12 wounds, and the Repulsor actually going up to T12. GW's decision to go with the wider spectrum of toughness means that vehicles will actually stand out in comparison to infantry toughness. Weapons like Plasma being designed to chew through power armor though they may stay at strength eight, will be wounding rhinos and other vehicles actually on fives. Even things that are strength four, like storm bolters or other weapons of that sort, will be wounding rhinos on sixes. Meaning that to actually crack open a rhino or any vehicle that T8 or more for that matter, will take some dedicated anti-vehicle weaponry. I think this will create for a more dynamic sense of gameplay when it comes to list building and moving units around the board. Meaning that, that if you decide to kit everyone out with plasma, currently in 9th edition, plasma strength 8, minus 4, up to 3 damage depending on what army, is kind of the end all be all for weapons, right? Strength 8 is a great threshold to be. AP 4, choose to anything doesn't have an interval. Two or three damage means that elite infantry or vehicles are just going to be absolutely obliterated by these weapons. But in 10th edition, it means that you're going to have to have specialized weapons to take out these vehicles. It's not just a, hey, I brought this weapon and it kills everything efficiently. The briefly mentioned vehicles degrading, as degrading has been reduced down to penalties to hit. Even some vehicles actually not degrading at all. It means that those rhinos, your impulsors, whatever transport you have, won't be moving those slow four inches at the end of the game after they've taken a beating. I think it leads to faster gameplay as well. You don't have to look up the arbitrary does this degrade at 10, 8, 12, what's the movement here? This just means that at a third of the hit points lost, that's when you're gonna start taking some minus to hit, and it's gonna be as simple as that. Though we've gotten glimpses of the changes to durability with, with the vehicles in this article, Terminators being T5, but what we'll look at next is the changes to weaponry and how they're going to handle the changes of 
weapon strength to deal with infantry or vehicles. If you're lost and wondering how the heck are these vehicles so high in toughness, what are these weapons and keywords Alex is talking about, check out these videos on your screen to catch up on the latest 10th edition news. Drop a like and subscribe to stay up to date on 10th edition news. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and I will catch you guys in the next video.